Good day to all of you once again. Welcome to St. Luke's. Today is the Tuesday of the 22nd week of Ordinary Time, and we are asked to pray in a special way for the intentions of Caitlin and Owen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Mindful of our continuing need of God's grace and mercy, we place our lives humbly before him as we begin our prayer. Your word enlightens us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Your compassion heals us. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Your love brings us to the fullness of life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. God of might, giver of every good gift, pour into our hearts the love of your name, so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good, and by your watchful care, keep safe what you have nurtured through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the Spirit scrutinizes everything, even the depths of God. Among man, who knows what pertains to the man except his spirit that is within? Similarly, no one knows what pertains to God except the Spirit of God. We have not received the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, so that we may understand the things freely given us by God. And when we speak about them, not with words taught by human wisdom, but with words taught by the spirit, describing spiritual realities in spiritual terms. Now, the natural man does not accept what pertains to the Spirit of God, for to him it is foolishness, and he cannot understand it, because it is judged spiritual. The one who is spiritual, however, can judge everything, but is not subject to judgment by anyone. For who has known the mind of the Lord so as to counsel him? But we have the mind of Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is just in all his ways. The Lord is just in all his ways. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness. The Lord is good to all and compassionate toward all his works. The Lord is just in all his ways. Let all your works give you thanks, O Lord. And let your faithful ones bless you. Let them discourse of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might. The, the Lord, Lord is just in all his ways, making known to men your might and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is a kingdom for all ages, and your dominion endures through all generations. The, the Lord, Lord is just in all his ways. The Lord is faithful in all his words and holy in all his works. The Lord lifts up all who are falling and raises up those who are bowed down. The Lord is just in all his ways. Alleluia, alleluia. According to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. 
Jesus went down to Capernaum, the town of Galilee. He taught them on the Sabbath, and they were astonished at his teaching, because he spoke with authority. In the synagogue there was a man with the spirit of an unclean demon, and he cried out in a loud voice, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Jesus rebuked him and said, Be quiet, come out of him. Then the demon threw the man down in front of them and came out of him without doing him any harm. They were all amazed and said to one another, What is there about his word? For with authority and power he commands the unclean spirits, and they come out. And news of him spread everywhere in the surrounding region. Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, yesterday we switched gears. Uh, we have concluded our lengthy visit with Matthew's Gospel, and now we turn to Luke. And yesterday we began at chapter 4, because what precedes that is everything having to do with uh, the, the birth of John the Baptist, the, uh, the Annunciation, the uh, birth of Jesus, all the stories that we're familiar with about the wise men and the shepherds and so forth, the so-called infancy narratives. But now we jump, have jumped to the beginning of Jesus' public ministry. And yesterday we heard that famous quote that he proclaims from Isaiah, as he begins his public work. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. He speaks of bringing glad tidings to the poor and sight to the blind, release to captives, and above all to proclaim God's favor to humankind. It's his mission statement, and it is seen as something that is spoken with authority. Today kind of carries on that same thing that, you know, he spoke with authority, not only in terms of what he was preaching and teaching, but also the authority of his actions, driving out the demon from the possessed man. In all of this, even his hearers get the idea that there is something more here than meets the eye. He speaks with authority. He acts with authority. And other gospel versions of this will say he acts with, speaks with authority and acts with authority, but not like the scribes have authority. Because those official teachers of the law, well, their ultimate recourse was what Moses gave them in the Torah. And that was the ultimate claim that they could have for what they say and what they taught. But Jesus has gone beyond that. And that little subtle difference means the world to these hearers of his. Because he speaks with the authority of God himself. He is the anointed one of God. He speaks with the Spirit of God, who knows all things about God. He speaks with God's own voice to take us beyond what we already know to something that is even greater. You know, like, uh, you have heard it said, and that you have heard it said is ultimately referring back to the Law of Moses. You shall love your neighbors but hate your enemies. He goes further and says, what I say to you is to love your enemies. He goes beyond what the law demands of us. And so out of that is where we find God at work within us and within our faith. We have all been given of that spirit. We all have the ability to have the mind of Christ, as Paul says to the Corinthians. We have the ability to know and to understand that Jesus teaches us a greater way, a more life-giving way, a more God-like way 
to go about our journey through this world so that the authority of our lives, our actions, our words, make it clear that God is very much present among us, very much working through us, and so we have no need to be afraid. We celebrate the life we have with the Lord Jesus and each other. So let us present our needs to the Father who protects us and consecrates us in his truth. For the renewal of prophecy and compassion in the church, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peoples and nations torn apart by war and violence, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the hungry, the homeless, and the abandoned, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who sit and listen at the feet of the Lord to his teaching, allowing him to transform our hearts and our minds to be patterned after his own, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For unending peace and blessing for those who have died, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions of Caitlin and Owen, for whom we pray in a special way today, for the needs of all who have asked us to pray for them, and for the personal needs we now remember in the quiet of our hearts. For these two, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Most gracious God, hear the prayers of those whom your Son has consecrated by your word of truth. Enlighten us with your Spirit, that we may share the holiness of Christ on earth, and so come to share his joy completely in heaven. For he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, the God of all creation, for it is through your goodness that we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed be God forever. Please pray with me now that our gifts will be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice in our hands to the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church. May this sacred offering, O Lord, confer on us always the blessing of salvation, so that what it celebrates in mystery it may accomplish in power through Jesus Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. It is our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For just as through your beloved Son you created the human race, so also through him, with great goodness, you formed it anew. So it is right that all your creatures serve you. 
that all the redeemed praise you, and that all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore, we too join with the company of angels and saints as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord. You are the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. For at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread. Giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Frank our Bishop, all the clergy, and all those who serve your church. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Apostles, the Martyrs, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> Let us pray together in confidence as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await our blessed hope the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. 
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Renewed by this bread from your heavenly table, we beseech you, O Lord, that being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and stir us to serve you in our neighbor. And this we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join in the prayer to St. Michael. St. Michael, Michael, the archangel, defend, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and the other evil spirits who prowl about the world for the ruin of souls. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.